Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective and today I'm going to start a new series and the working title of this series is going to be called Alternative OS. Now very often the choice is really only two. You're either going to go with an Apple based operating system like OS X or you're going to go with a Microsoft based operating system like Windows 7, 8.1, not 9, or 10. Now, Linux has begun to get a little bit more reasonable in my opinion, and it is very often the third wheel. Generally speaking, the only people that you see running this are system administrators, people that very much understand what is going on with computing and have a very specific set of needs. You're generally not recommending a Linux operating system to those individuals that are just doing regular computing tasks. However, with certain operating systems like the one I'm going to be talking about today, Elementary OS, I actually think that this trend is starting to change for the better. So if you've never heard of Elementary OS, it is a fork, if I, hopefully I'm using that term correctly, of a very recognized uh, Linux operating system, Ubuntu. Uh, they've just released their OS 5 version, which is codenamed Juno, and Elementary, even when it was in its infancy, was really known for having a very simple, a very clean, and a very user-friendly experience. And that certainly carried through in their new version. Startup is incredibly quick. Things are very familiar, especially if you are a Mac user. I know that they're not necessarily a huge fan of the comparison between Mac OS and what they're doing. However, there are some design similarities that, you know, really can't be ignored, and that's not really a bad thing. However, if you're coming from the Windows environment, your mileage may vary just a tiny bit. There are a couple of things as a person that uses Windows, Linux, and Mac, look at and say, okay, this might be a little bit of a learning curve, but other than that, things are quite clean, quite crisp, and just really, in general, uh, easy to use. One choice that you will need to get used to that is unique, of course, is that there is no minimize button. Uh, again, it's one of those quirky design choices along with uh, restricting what kind of apps you can install uh, by default. Uh, their idea is because when you close a program it is saved in the last state uh, when it was running in the operating system that minimizing something is no longer required. I I can't wrap my head around that, but it is certainly something that I would like to learn more about if I were to use this on a production machine. Now, with that being said, there is a limitation to easy to use, and it has to do with the choice that they've made. They have a app center, which is their version of the app store or their software center, and it is a very locked down environment, and I, I use that term locked a little loosely in the sense that only certain packages that they have a high level of comfort will operate on elementary are actually present there. And there is no easy, well I shouldn't say that, that's not true. There is no obvious way to add support for additional packages. So if you require something, say like Oracle Java, on the surface, if you are going to terminal and trying to add that package, it's going to kick back an error message. That being said, there are ways to get around that, but it does potentially compromise the user experience. So what they've decided to do is have a specific set of apps in their store uh, for you to choose from. Now, the other thing to consider with this app store and elementary's model as a whole is it one runs off of essentially a pay what you want system. So you can directly support the operating system developers or the developers on the app store. And to me, this is excellent because it allows you to fully try software. And if you believe that it is worth uh, even a little bit of your money, you can send that funds uh, directly to those people developing the app. And I think that that's a very sound and a very sustainable business model. And it's one of the first that I've seen in this sort of environment. So yeah, you can get the software for free. You don't need to pay for it. However, if you like it and you want to help, it's a very easy 
uh, direct system to use. It's not complicated. You're not having to jump through a series of hoops. Uh, it's very simple. It's very streamlined. The other thing that I've noticed is that out of the box, Elementary supports a lot of different hardware features like on this Yoga 14. For example, screen rotation worked out of the box. Excellent. Uh, there were a couple of things specific to this piece of hardware that you know, were a little bit problematic, like the touchpad on the back of the computer was still actuating even though it was put into tablet mode, but this is understandable. A few other nice touches is actually just how the operating system is set up. Applications are located in the top left-hand corner, whereas all of your kind of system tray icons are located in the upper right. And just by swiping over uh, with these with your mouse, you get little status updates, pieces of information, and it's very beautiful. The notification center looks absolutely wonderful. And on this particular display, it's just very crisp, very clean. You do have an app tray, very similar to, again, any of you that are coming from the Apple operating system. And that's probably a good point to mention this, that this is actually an operating system that will run both on Windows machines and Apple machines. I haven't had the opportunity to test this on an Apple machine yet. Perhaps in the future, uh, when one comes across my desk that isn't mine, it's got a blank hard drive, I'll experiment with that. Because I as imagine, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get on there. Speaking about difficulty of install, depending on the age of your hardware, you are going to have to disable secure boot in your BIOS settings or this will not install. Don't be afraid to do that. Elementary is a very highly regarded and trusted package, but just understand that that is going to be a step that you are going to have to do and the computer might not necessarily tell you when you're trying to install that OS. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little introduction to Elementary OS. I certainly have, and the next time that I'm installing Linux onto a computer that I am going to use, I think I'm actually going to give this a try. I know I love my customization abilities, especially with other distributions like Mint and Ubuntu, you name it. But at the same time, there is something to be said about the absolute beauty and simplicity what they're going for here, and I think they've absolutely nailed it. If you've enjoyed this sort of content, I hope that you would consider uh, liking the video, sharing the video, and of course subscribing if you think that this content is worth uh, other people's time so we can share it all over the internet. Once again, if you're not following me on Twitter, I would recommend that you do that because I do tend to post images and little sneak peeks of what might be coming across the table in terms of my next video. And if there are other questions that don't really relate to this, feel free to hit me up on Curious Cat and I'll be able uh, to answer those questions there and they automatically get posted to my Twitter feed once they've been answered. And I hope you enjoy this content yet again and I shall see you next time.